Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're looking at the Hay and Forage pack for Farming Simulator 22. Uh, it's been out for a little bit now and we're gonna take it through its paces, see what's good, what's bad, what works well. You know, see what Giants has brought us with this DLC. This is part of the year two season pass. It focuses on new equipment, or mowing, probably silage work, that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got some specialty machines in here. They added new brands, Brillmeyer, Reform, and Ryder, uh, also including new stuff for Crone, Pottinger, Rigitrack, and Septnusel. The Rigitrack SKH60 has a slope compensating cabin. This is pretty neat. We'll see that, but basically it gyroscopes as you uh, move. I am on the Erlengrat map right now because there's a nice slope we can get into and uh, show that off. But I think it mostly offers some interesting choices, some cool looking machines for early on in your farm's career. Not exactly massive scale stuff, but definitely useful tools to have on the farm. This would definitely be a useful pack if you're on a like a smaller map, like Bally Spring or something. It's got really confined places to access because, well, here, let, let's get a couple of these guys going. So, yeah, these guys look really cool. Basically specialized, looks like telehandler kind of things. And one of those. Yeah, we'll do twin wheels on this guy. Then we've got some more standard kind of tractors. Ooh, could also do the double wheel setup on that. 109 horsepower. Oh, this thing. I've been I've been wanting to play with this for a while. It looks really neat. I just kind of wish there was more options for the back. Oh yeah, look at that beefy beacon. It's pretty sweet. We'll see those here in a sec. Like this guy. Oh, which gives us a couple different options. Shipper front guard, bale trailer, front guard. Yeah, let's just do that. And then we've got a silage tank for this. I think this is probably the most interesting addition you'll have. Yeah, for the T8X. Because it basically turns, well, let's see, it's 156 for both of these, 158, maybe about 160,000 to basically get a self-propelled forage harvester. Oh, yeah. And then... The personal mower. This looks really fun. I, do you like transformers? And we've got some extra cutters. Sure, put some lights on there. We'll try a couple different configurations. We got lots of different options for cutters in here. Cutter. Yeah, these are looking a little bit more interesting. So some different uh, configurations for wind rowers. For those people who like to get out there, do some raking. What kind of wheel set can we have here? Oh, some wide tires. That's not bad. Spare wheel, sure. So part of the advantage of this pack is supposed to be th these things behave, you well, behave well on rough terrain. Like I was saying earlier, we're going to be looking at uh, this map on Gal. Hmm. 
This is a very hilly map, so we should be able to find some grass for it pretty easily. Really, really cool looking machines. And that's something I really like about the official Giants DLC. While you can get lots of functionality in the uh, mod hub, all those different mods, rarely do they look as good as the official stuff. This pack goes for $9.99. Like I said, it's part of the Season 2 pack, so... You got that, you got this. But if you don't, it's probably why you're checking out the video. All right, let's hop in. We'll, uh... Let's do the SKH-60. Get it set up. So, as you can see, this has all-wheel steering, which is really neat. You can get really tight in if you got a lot of trees or power lines or something on your field. Something like this would be great for you. Got one of these guys. And sure, we'll pull a tether with us just to put a little extra gear on it. Obviously not the optimal setup for this, but trying to just look at the gear that's in this pack. These things do seem to be a little ho low horsepower. I don't think you're going to be able to go blitzing straight up the side of a cliff with them. But we'll take a look and see how they do. Hmm. A little bit of struggle to get up here. Usually you won't see farms with this kind of grades on them though, so... Alright, so here's a field of grass. Let's take a look now. A nice big slope here. We'll see how it does on the way up. Do a couple of passes. Do some cut and tedding as we go. Oop. Oops. Oop. Lower them both. That would probably help. There we go. setting any speed records. I was trying to go straight up the hill though and hopefully we'd be a little bit smarter about how we do this. That's picking up some speed so you do a little bit back and forth. Well that's neat. I like the uh, windrow is actually articulated there. Okay, let's see how it does with just the mower going. So let's go ahead and drop that guy. Okay, that's a little bit better getting uphill. Oof, that is great. Oh, let's check out the gyroscope and cab. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Trigger warning for all those dads that like to do crisscross cutting swaths in their uh, front lawn. I'm going for more of a uh, 
off-roading serpentine pattern here. Okay, actually not doing too bad. I don't know that I'd ever want to put, if I was going to be mowing this field on the regular, anything extra on the back of this. But for something like this, like if this was my only field on this farm, for one of the few, I was trying to do some silage. This isn't a bad way to go. All right, let's park this and we'll uh, check out the next piece. All right, so we got one of the tractors here, the Reform. 110V. So this also has the all-wheel turning here. Which again can be really nice for getting in tight. So kind of a similar thing with the other vehicles in here. We got the uh, front and back PTOs, three-point hitches. So you got a lot of options there. And it's got a little bit more horsepower. So we have 75 versus 75, okay, same. Less gas, a little bit heavier. Heavier can be good. This is that with the, the gyroscoping cabin, which is neat. 3.7 ton, 40 kilometers, 110 liters, 109 horsepower. So we're getting a lot of the same functionality here. And it's actually a little cheaper than this guy too. This might be the way to go. Yeah. 109 versus 75. It's not too shabby. Then we also have this guy. So we can just kind of, I guess, lightly jog at eight kilometers an hour. Got a pretty good uh, cutting size on it for just a hand push. Where is it? 2.2 to 4.2 meters. What? Oh yeah, because it has a wind rower option also. Which is an extra 12,500 and 10,000. Farmer Cop pointed this out in one of his videos and I, I totally agree. I don't understand the pricing on this. This is 33,500 basically to get the mower variant. And then why don't you just increase the base price by 10 and then just add 2.5 for that variant. I don't, I don't get that. It feels like a gotcha pricing sort of thing. But anyways. So those that may know what's coming, or at least keenly observer, can see that there's a uh, change driving mode. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness. Suddenly we got a segue. A little bit faster. I can be sending any land speed records. Those spiky wheels give you a little Mad Max Fury Road kind of vibe. I'm sure it's supposed to like grip and aerate the soil or something like that. This could be fun though. The interesting part is it seems to be doing pretty well. Like we're doing the hill climb here. It hasn't dropped speed at all. Oh, except when I steer off into the rough. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh goodness. But it goes at a pretty good clip, I gotta say. I wonder why you would do this as opposed to the push mode. 
Because, yeah, the cutter blade turns off while you're cruising. Or turn off, turns on, so... Like we're almost... Missed our turn off. Finally, a machine for those people with uh, first person predilections. Here we go. Enforced first person. This, I gotta say, is pretty cool. Look at it go, and there is no slowdown going straight uphill here. I wouldn't want to drive it all over the map. I definitely want to have a trailer set up for it, but man, this thing can cook. Is there any swathing options? Nope. So, well, I mean, yeah, where would it be, I guess? This is your pretty stripped down cutting machine. It does one thing. And doggone it, it does it well. Let's check. Oh, yeah, really tight turns. Wow. This might be the surprise of the pack for me. I was not expecting this. I thought this was more of a meme implement. This is pretty good. Pretty decent sized blade. Goes in a nice clip. We're looking at about, what, 50,000 we saw? To get the blade set up. I guess if you really wanted to get a pair, one with wind rowing, one with the other, you could do that. All right. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead and park this guy off to the side. Check out our check out our next piece of equipment. I'm just gonna keep cutting the entire way because it makes me happy. Saw so this guy just for uh, not gonna be too much different from the other guy, other than the lack of gyroscoping cabin. Still pretty slick. If you didn't really have a desire or a uh, definite preference between the two, I grab whichever one came up on the used market, but still pretty decent. Okay, the one I really want to play with right now. So we got a back. This guy, the uh, Muley T8X. Pretty straightforward, right? Strap downs, all that kind of stuff. I want to check out the forage back though. This is the functionality that's the most intriguing to me. I like it because it's such a compact form. Look that up. Oh, let's, uh, well, we could, we don't need to add the silage in there. We understand that it can, uh, pick up silage. Okay, so we've got a nice folding little loading area there. So it's got pickups like a uh, harvester wagon or forage wagon would have, which is neat. But it can actually get up and move. Ooh, this will be our first fastest traversal yet today. 52 kilometers an hour. Oh, nice little piston sound. I don't know if you heard that. Up the hill we go. You can do it, little man. Everything in this pack is just cute. I don't know how else to describe it. They're just they're just cute. Alright, let's take a look here. 
All right, swapping it on. Oh, we got a rear pickup. Okay, that makes sense. I was wondering where it would be. All right, so in the back there. Ooh, okay. So this is definitely something you're going to want to have um, going with a wind rower. We have a pickup over there. So let's let's stop for a second since we brought. I haven't done one of the wind rowers yet, and that's something I want to do. So let's go get that set up real fast. And we'll see how it does in conjunction with this guy. All right, here's the next bits we're going to look at. We got another cutter wind rower. Let's look at these guys because they seem really interesting. This might be a little bit big for our little tractor here, but let's take a look. Yeah, and some of the machinery in this pack is yeah, going to be useful for other equipment that's already in. Let's drop that. So the interesting things about these rider wind rowers, let's get hooked up here. So I think these are the ones that use the conveyor belts. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see it on the front there, as opposed to the fans. It's a little bit different on what they can do. Looks like we're doing all right there. Turn on the merger. There we go. And then you can toggle your work mode. We're on rear now, so let's get them. So you can see everything's kind of putting off to the left there. We can also have it where it just splits straight down the middle. So you got some options here, which is really neat. And then we got left and right. Obviously, you want to make sure that your front and back are working in conjunction. Let's get this up to the field, see how it does. Yeah, you can really feel how tight the turning is on this tractor. It's really pretty nimble. That's something I like about the vehicles on this one so far. Not exactly the biggest swath in the world. We could probably get away with just the, uh, eh, maybe just the one header. Let me check. Is this? No, it does not. Okay, front does not fold up at all, just the back. All right, so we're going to do a left side. Get them lowered into position. Huh. I don't think you need the front one if you got this set up because it looks like your coverage is kind of redundant there so that might be a no duh but I'm gonna drop that although we're gonna be very back heavy now that's fine we're going uphill so let's go ahead and move yeah it's lowered it's on hmm say it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot I feel like I'm well it is it is wind road I don't feel like it was 
putting it, arranging it in the quite the right way. I feel like I think we just figured it out. This is supposed to be a kind of a front mount thing, isn't it? Take a look. Actually. Down or we drive backwards. I don't know why that would be such a big difference though. Being up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha! We have solved the mystery. This is another one of those trademark giants things. Here's a tool, go figure it out. All right, well, that's how that's supposed to work. Okay, cool, let's play with the driven modes now that we understand that. I'm actually doing a pretty good job on this, so the splits to the outside. You can make rows going on either way, which is pretty neat. I'm actually doing a pretty good job on this. Learn by doing, that's what I say. All right. We're gonna go ahead and switch one more time. So this one should be, yeah, that's all left. Right, and then split. Okay, cool. All right. So, we've got a good idea on what these guys are doing. You definitely want to have them front mounted. But I really love the conveyor belt system here. It looks really neat. Things a little bit more wind road for us. Makes it a bit easier. A lot of implements to get grass cuttings going well. Oh, to lower the pickup, how about that? There we go. See how much a full load looks like for this thing. But yeah, we could have the silage additive going. If you're gonna have this set up, I would definitely have a wind rower because that pickup is just not very big. Not that the pickups on the uh, Forge wagons are terribly large. Oh man, that rear wheel steering. Well, the all wheel steering. That's pretty neat. I could definitely see using this in conjunction with like course play. It'd probably make your life a little bit easier with the AI drivers. But overall, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this. What's the capacity on these guys? Pretty neat. Almost 14 cubic meters. Okay. That's not too bad. It's not too bad for this little guy. Just real quick, we'll take a look. The Tornado 306. Looks pretty standard. Pretty wide coverage there, I like that. We'll quickly go over the rest of the implements. I think we've got the basics of all of it at this point. We've got another front end mower there. Got the uh, crone rake. Oh, it's cute. That is adorable. So this would be pretty good setup if you're gonna do, like this is a pretty neat combo here. Makes sense, right? 
So if you wanted to get like bare bones into silage, you could do this kind of setup. You're doing your cutting, you're doing your wind rowing, and then you could have that uh, truck come behind with silage additive. And you'll be you'll be set. You'll have the basics of what you need. I'm gonna have to try a playthrough with this, especially on uh, like I was saying, some of the smaller field maps. That could be pretty keen. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to grab this bad boy, but we'll try. We will try. Wolf. Okay. So this looks like this would be the toe behind conveyor belt. It's got to be. Yeah, you can't be pushing that in front of you. So kind of like the other ones we were playing with. Let's lower that down. Ah, okay. So this is, so we have that gap in the middle there. So we'd want to have that front piece for this one. Okay. So the larger piece is made to be a standalone one. And this is part of the larger setup. Fire it on. Or I guess you don't actually need that. You could end up... If you had a, a wider cutting blade, you could do it just like this. And that should pile them up in the middle there. Actually, I'm surprised it's doing as well as it is. Those those little wheels are helping in the back there. You can get all of this going. Oh, that's a little bit much. A little bit much for this little guy. Yeah, he's bogged down. Oh well. Wasn't really expecting that. It's actually really surprised it was doing as well as it was with this uh, tow along. Yeah, the R9 Profi. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Okay, last two pieces of equipment. These are pretty standard. We've seen this stuff in the in the game already. You just got your giant rake wind rower thing I'm just curious how well it's going to tell goes pretty well give it a quick run around pretty nice dang swath on that or uh yeah there it goes So that is one neat thing about the conveyor belt setup is you can set up where it's going to deposit the clippings as opposed to these guys where, well, it's always going to be in the middle because that's the way it's set up. You don't have a lot to say about that. The area that it uses up to, a little bit less than these guys. But not too bad. And then finally, we've got the Ottinger Forager Wagon. The Jumbo. How big how big is the Jumbo? Yeah, this is 86.5. Wow, that is pretty big. <laughs> that is a pretty big tank on there. 37.3 cubic meters. Uh oh, 47,300 liters of uh, clippings here. Whoop, whoop. Yep, back end steering us around a little bit. I definitely want to use this with a larger uh, implement, larger vehicle, but it's not too bad. Okay, it's neat looking. You got a cool little advertisement. Everyone needs agriculture. You're right. You're right. We didn't have agriculture. Be a lot less people. 
Uh, overall, yeah, some really interesting and neat looking vehicles in here. I like that. Uh, some new options. <laughs> that Brillmeyer. Definitely going to have to play around with that some more. Uh, we got more options for stuff we already have in game, which is always nice. And then these conveyor belt uh, wind rower setups are pretty interesting. But anyways, there it is, guys. If you don't have this already and you don't have the year two pack, you can get links down below to go pick it up yourself or support the channel. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And if you have noticed any other uses for these tools or implements, make sure to leave a comment down below. Share some of your wisdoms and findings. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh no! Wait! Hold on! Hold on! Come on! Ah! Uh, we can do it! Yes!